The Golden State Warriors had a fascinating offseason. So fascinating that I decided to make a 32 minute video about it, which you should definitely check out on the channel. One of my favorite videos I've ever made. But the main point I made in that video was the conflicting moves that they made compared to what this roster could do. They drafted young players who are definitely a bit raw when this team is obviously trying to compete for a championship with a prime Steph Curry who just had one of the best offensive seasons of all time and Klay Thompson who should finally be coming back from injury. So we will see if their strategy will work and they can seamlessly transition from this era to the next era while also competing at a top level or if it will fall flat on their face and they'll be forced to make a big, big trade. Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer. Bang! Bang! It's good! Doncic wins the game at the buzzer! You preach, I guess about it talking trash. <laughs> now they wanna pose with me like uh uh not so fast. <laughs> As far as the Warriors offseason went, obviously the big things that took over all the headlines was the picks that they ended up making, as they selected Jonathan Kuminga number 7th overall and Moses Moody number 14th. Now in a vacuum, I actually really like the value for both of these players. These guys were both two top 7 players on my board, I, both, I loved both of these guys. I loved Moses Moody a little bit more, but that was especially just because of where he was projected like i'd say i was just about where everybody else fell on kuminga where he has so much talent so much athleticism but is a bit raw needs to work on uh, some things whether it be his shooting his iq he definitely needs uh some refining but he's so physically uh gifted and talented that i think in a good system like golden state he could end up developing really well and then moses moody's the pr uh, prototypical three and d player you want he's got a crazy long wingspan that really helps him on the defensive side of the ball and he could be a player that makes an impact in the short run and the long run for this roster but the thing that confused me and a lot of other people was them not going all in on a window where they could really go after a championship now my thing is it's probably just because the trade wasn't there i i really do believe that the warriors if the wreck right trade was there and they could have made uh, a trade that would have won them a championship i think they would have made it but they didn't see any trades that they liked enough so they went in a different direction they were trying to do what the spurs did when they had Kawhi leonard they're trying to move on from the old guys but still compete at the highest level it's a similar thing to what the miami heat are doing right now as well where they have some young talent but they're also having a some older guys who are going to be declining sooner rather than later. I think it's a very interesting strategy and it's one that could work out supremely well. Like if everything went right for the Warriors, these young guys make an immediate impact. Klay Thompson comes back like the guy we all knew he can be and uh, Steph Curry continues to play fantastic basketball, which I think we all expect, and they're constantly competing for a championship while they also have themselves set up for the future with a core of Moody, Poole, uh, Kuminga, and Wiseman. And that would be absolutely beautiful, but it could also fail, and they could also really struggle to compete at that top level. Say if Klay Thompson declines, coming off two really severe injuries, and just not playing basketball for so long, it could really face them with some big problems. And again, I would heavily recommend you check out that 32 minute video because it goes very in depth on why this could be a great thing or it could also be a really bad thing for the Warriors. The other things that did in the offseason were definitely more low key, but I think are gonna be important to the team, which was mainly just adding some veterans, getting rid of some guys who no longer fit on the team, uh, getting rid of a guy like Kelly Oubre, who I just think wasn't a Warriors type player. I believe in him having a good season in Charlotte, uh, but with the system of the Warriors, he was never a great fit. Their system is predicated on being uh, a high IQ player 
player and being able to make quick reads, which is really Kelly Oubre's biggest weakness. Also, he started off shooting the ball historically bad. Uh, they also get rid of, get a, got rid of Eric Pascal for a bit of low value for sure. Uh, I think they could have got a little more for him, but he's another guy who is a decent player in a vacuum. But I think uh, just with the direction that the Warriors are going in, uh, with how much shooting they added to this roster and how much shooting they already had, uh, I think getting rid of a guy like him who doesn't seem to fit their play style anymore makes sense for sure. Uh, they brought in Otto Porter to be a good veteran on this team team guy who can be a three and d uh, person off the bench his biggest issues is he hasn't been able to stay on the court recently but when he's on the court he's real solid uh they got nemanja bielitsa who i'm a little bit uh worried about not not like he's gonna make a huge impact on this team but he's always been a guy in theory that i liked as a big man who can shoot but he didn't even crack the miami's heat uh miami heat's uh, rotation when it came playoff time which definitely is a sign of not great things and then another guy they got from the miami heat in free agency was andre Gudala, who i think uh, isn't going to have a huge impact actually on the court but i think his off the court impact is going to be so good when you have these young raw wings like a moses moody and like a jonathan kaminga bringing in one of the best veterans in the league someone who's been in basically every situation you can be in other than being like a superstar he's been in all star a quality starter a six man a guy who's been at the end of benches he's been everywhere he can really teach these guys a lot of very valuable things and he can teach them the warrior system very well so this offseason other than the picks was just meant to add some players to this team who are going to be impactful and who are going to help but aren't going to be like main guys on this roster it's just uh the icing on the top of the cake basically is what they were doing with those free agent acquisitions now going on to my projection projected rotation for them at the point guard position we have Steph Curry who I think is definitely going to be a strong MVP candidate this year uh, Steph Curry is someone who I've came around on not even like I didn't think he was amazing or didn't like him but I've just appreciated him so much especially watching him last year after he was injured I gained a whole nother level of appreciation that I never really had for Steph Curry before it, it just really changed my perspective and just looking back on things um, how I undervalued Steph Curry a bit because the Warriors were so dominant at, w at one point that you never want to root for the team that's just going through everyone unless they're your team uh, but now that Steph Curry had to be an underdog had to really do everything possible to try to scrape the Warriors into the playoffs it, it gave me a lot of respect for Steph Curry and I loved watching him last season Klay Thompson at the two is going to be out till about New Year's time which does suck and I am really worried for Klay Thompson coming back because so many people are really high on the Warriors strictly based on them expecting Klay Thompson to come back fully as the guy he was and I don't even think it will be his fault remotely if he doesn't come back the same guy it's just he is an older player and he is coming off two of the most severe injuries in basketball a lot of people compare it to the Kevin Durant situation, but not only did he have a torn Achilles and ACL when Kevin Durant only had the Achilles, KD is the minority. He is the one who broke the boundaries for many people coming off that severe of an injury. Most people don't come back the same, uh, and I'm just I'm just really hopeful that Klay Thompson comes back the same guy because I love watching Klay on the court, and he seems like an amazing and really funny guy off the court. So uh, I just really hope that everything goes well for him this season i'm just saying i do have my reservations and i do have my worries uh just mostly based on the defensive side of the ball i think shooting wise and stuff he'll uh, be fine he may struggle a bit getting downhill and uh, may struggle a bit with like conditioning moving off the ball as much as he does uh, but my biggest worry is just lateral quickness and him losing some of that with natural uh, re regression due to age and then him ha coming off those two major injuries. At the three, they have Andrew Wiggins, who got the vaccine, so he'll be able to play all their games he's healthy in, which is great for them because Andrew Wiggins actually... Uh, really carved himself out a role last year. He's still going to have some Andrew Wiggins moments where he takes some dumb shots and makes some pretty bad passes. But overall, he was real solid for them. Uh, just got in where he needed to on the offensive side of the ball. Wasn't forcing nearly as much as he did in previous years and was really good defensively. Like all NBA defense caliber guy last year, which was really impressive for May Wiggs. Uh, and then at the power forward spot, I have Draymond Green, who I think I'm a little bit higher on than most people. 
people. I, I just truly gained a, a whole different appreciation for the Warriors team as a whole last year watching them. It's just something clicked with me that it had never had before. And I loved watching them a lot last season. Uh, and Draymond's a guy who is just one of the greatest leaders of all time. One of the best big men passers. We don't really talk about him in that conversation because he's not a center. And he's not Jokic as a passer. But I mean the dude averaged like eight assists last year he's an incredible playmaker still a top tier defender in the league and we all talk about like ben simmons potentially getting traded and being a quote-unquote improved draymond and while he's obviously a more talented uh especially just physically at this point than draymond I think that leadership is such an X factor into what makes Draymond Draymond. And he's just so special. His chemistry with Seth Curry is on a different planet. It seems like they just always know what each other are doing. And it's so beautiful to watch those two work off of each other. Then at the center spot, this is where I get a bit worried with uh, James Wiseman. He's just a guy who struggled to stay healthy. Uh, and he just hasn't played much basketball in the past couple of years. And he didn't look that good last year when he did play. He was a guy who I was worried about when they picked him. I never thought he was the greatest fit for the system. And I thought on Yeka Kongwu, the other main center coming out of that draft class, uh, draft class would have been a better guy for Golden State to take. I just think James Wiseman could have been better used on a team that would have given him the ball more and uh, let him just experiment more, let him be a bit of a unicorn, while the Golden State system is mostly just built upon uh, making quick reads, setting good screens, rolling to the basket, and running the floor as a center. Uh, I think James Wiseman could do that, but I don't think that's necessarily his best role. So it's going to be interesting to see how he does this year. He could have a good season, though, and I wouldn't be surprised at all and then some key bench pieces jordan Poole, who has been a standout of uh, the preseason he was just excellent there averaged about 25 points per game he's a sniper a guy who's just a complete flamethrower his shot creation ability definitely looked improved uh, and he was so good at the end of uh, last season too a lot of people are saying that he's getting overhyped and it's just a preseason thing but I don't know if they watched the Warriors at the end of last year. It just started to all click for Jordan Poole. It really came together, and he looked great. Uh, I think he's going to start a good amount of games when Klay Thompson is out. And when Klay Thompson's back, I think he's going to be in his most natural role, which is like a Jordan Clarkson-type player, just a complete flamethrower bucket getter off the bench. And I'm expecting a really big season from him. Uh, Andre Iguodala, more of a veteran guy, like I said. He, I don't think he's going to do much actually on the court, but he'll get some minutes and he'll be fine enough. Uh, and he obviously knows the system so well that I think he could play within it good enough. Otto Porter Jr. is going to have an impact as a 3 and D guy as long as he can stay healthy. Uh, Jonathan Kuminga, I expect to just be an athletic piece off the bench that they experiment with a bit. I would expect him to get like a crazy amount of minutes early on, but I think his size, his defensive upside, and his ability as a cutter and a rebounder could get him some early tick. Uh, Juan Toscano Anderson is one of the better role-playing guys in the league. He plays really hard, very good playmaker for a four and about a league average three-point shooter. Uh, he was a real gem of last season for them, and he's a, one of my favorite guys on this roster. And then Kevon Looney, just really solid backup center. He's dealt with a lot of injuries, which has definitely derailed him a bit, but he's still uh, a pretty reliable backup five to have. And then late rotation guys, Damian Lee. Uh, will come in provide a little bit of shooting moses moody um i think he deserves to be a key bench piece but just with how they ran him in preseason and where he was picked i don't expect him to get a ton of minutes early on i think he'll have to really earn them and i think he will earn them i'm a big believer in moses moody but he's definitely got some things to work on his shooting was pretty up and down in the preseason a little bit streaky uh, his playmaking is something he definitely still needs to work on and he just needs to improve as an overall shot creator and then Nemanja bielitsa will bring some size and shooting and then uh chris Chioza is their one two-way contract. So now talking about my expectations for this team, I expect them to be anywhere between, I would say, the third and the sixth seed in the Western Conference. I think they're definitely a solidified playoff team this year. Uh, everything just makes a lot more sense with this roster. The roster is way more filled out than it had been in previous years. Uh, I don't expect them to go super deep in the playoffs. I think their ceiling is making the western conference finals and maybe the finals if they get lucky but it's just so dependent on clay thompson 
uh, coming back and being himself and Draymond Green still having another really good year. Uh, so we'll just have to see with this team. I think it's really dependent on that big factor and that is going to decide the fate uh, for this team this year. But I think regardless, they're still going to be good because they have enough pieces around Steph Curry. And I'm a believer that Steph Curry is the second best player on the planet. I think he's better than Kevin Durant. This has been my my hot take that I'm gonna that I'm gonna die on the hill that I'm gonna die on. Uh, that and and the Brandon Ingram take. If you know, you know. The, those are the two takes that I'm just so confident in. And you can bring all this stuff up. I just think Steph Curry's amazing and one of the best players we've ever seen touch a basketball. I love that man, and I'm I'm really excited to watch Warriors basketball this year. I think it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. It's gonna be an absolute blast. They're gonna be must see TV. And uh, I'm just really excited to see the return of Clay, the improvement of Poole, and how well these young guys do. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, but yeah, that has been the video. It has been Michael. Like and subscribe to the channel. Check out that Warriors video earlier on the channel. And peace out.